Hey guys, Thunder E here. I am back uh, from CES 2024 and it was really cool to see the show back in full flow. Tons of things to see around, lots of floor space, lots of walking around, but a great show overall. Now, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor of this video, XJimmy. We'll be checking out some stuff from them later on in this video. And this show was really impressive because there's a lot of things that were cool, new, um, you know, innovative, iteratives, you name it, at the show. So let's go ahead and start off with our very first category, TV and entertainment. Now, the very first thing I wanna point out is the LG OLED T. It is the world's first uh, transparent OLED television from LG, 77 inches, you can see through the TV, and this thing is a statement piece, but also the same quality OLED you expect from LG on a day-to-day -day basis. Absolutely looks wonderful. The UI is also pretty clean. I like the way it looks. And honestly, it's just a really solid TV. Now, price point, we don't know yet, but I think it's going to be an expensive TV. Now, the next TV is the Samsung S95D. Samsung announced three TVs this year, the S95D, the S90D, and the S85D. But the 95D is the only one with the anti-glare uh, display, which some of you I know have complained about in my other video, but honestly, you have to see it. It looks really good. And all that glossiness you talked about, losing lost and color is not true. I saw it with my own eyes. It looks really good. And I can't wait to review that TV. Now, when we move over to projectors, XGME announced two projectors that I think will blow your mind. This is an IMAX Enhanced Experience Projector uh, that is a successor to the Horizon from last year. You've got 35% more brightness on this projector, which is great. Also, uh, you've got some new technology with its lasers built in there, which uh, gives you just better functionality and cleaner, brighter, and sharper imagery. Plus, the projector can rotate in 360 degrees, any direction, and any wall. One of the cool things about the projector is that once you actually uh, set it down, it calibrates uh, it on its own, and will find the right spot on the wall for your viewing pleasure. So you can actually program it, each wall for a different uh, course of entertainment. So your front wall for your YouTube videos, and of course the one up top for your um, <laughs> TikTok scrolling. So whatever you want to do, you can do it with that projector. The second one is the Aladdin. Now the Aladdin is a projector, a 360 speaker, and a ceiling light that you can install by yourself. You don't need any professional help required. And this is that one stop solution that is great for small apartments, little studios, and I think a lot of people will like it. Now the Aladdin should be coming out in a couple of months in Japan first, and the Horizon Max coming out later on this year, priced under 3,000. And if it's anything like the Horizon last year, I can't wait to actually check it out. Now this is not a best of CES, but honestly this year, there were robot lawn mowers everywhere. Everybody had one, I everywhere I walked around, I could see a robot lawnmower. And it was interesting to see because, you know, the robot vacuum is something that has kind of matured a little bit more this year. Some great features, but lawnmowers are the new thing. I didn't get to check any of them out, but I just want to put that out there that you could be seeing a lot of that kind of content, I'm sure, on YouTube uh, this, this year as we move down the line. Now, another big winner this year is Intel. Intel as a whole came out swinging with their Meteor Lake processor, but there were a lot of devices that showcased this processor across the board. Asus had the Zen Screen Fold OLED. This is a 17 inch OLED display that folds, looks really slick. It is coming out soon, um, and this thing just looks gorgeous. It's running, of course, a Meteor Lake processor, either the Intel Core Ultra 7 or 9. I'm most think likely a 9 would be in here, uh, which is great to see. Now, LG also had a full line of grand la Gram laptops with Intel Core Ultra, and they varied from the Gram 14 all the way to the Gram 17 and a Gram 2-in-1 as well. And you can see how light these laptops are running in Intel Core Ultra. There were some that did have dedicated graphics with an RTX 30, 3050, uh, but again, the laptops were super light. You've got the Core Ultra in there, either a Intel Core Ultra 7 or 9, so you're getting really great performance on there. And I think a lot of people like this. Now, the one thing I did see that I was really happy was the appearance of the Asus NUC. Now, the Intel NUC line has been around for a while. I've covered them on this channel quite a bit. 
Uh, but when Intel sold the, the division to ASUS, some people were worried. I wasn't because I knew ASUS were going to be coming out with something hot. And we have an our ASUS ROG NUC, which is going to be a killer. This comes with an Intel Core Ultra chipset, Ultra Core Ultra 9, and can go all the way to a 4070 graphics card. It's the mobile chipset in there. It's very compact in nature, uh, but you've got enough space for cooling and some really great performance, especially while gaming. So I can't wait to get that in and doing some gaming on the ASUS ROG NUC. Now, the final thing from Intel that I really did like, and trust me, there were a ton of other devices out there, uh, was the MSI Claw. This is the first portable PC gaming handheld that has an Intel processor in there, at least modern one, with an Intel Core Ultra 9 in there. It's great to see this chipset, sorry, <clears throat> with an Intel Core Ultra 7, it's great to see. The MSI Claw kind of looks like the ASUS ROG Ally, although they talked about dual cooling fans in there. And also you should expect better graphical performance with the Intel Arc uh, GPU in the MSI Claw. So that would be interesting to see. Hopefully uh, we get it soon. Pricing starts at $699 uh, and goes up. So I can't wait to check it out, but you know, more gaming handouts, the better for me. Now, AMD is not left out of all this fun. They do have something really cool in the ASUS ROG Zephyrus G14. This is one lovely laptop, and I've, I'm glad to see this laptop grow in style and also functionality. It's got the new Ryzen 8000 chipset in there. Uh, of course, you can go up to a 4070, 80 graphics card. That's not the issue in there. The build quality is nice. The keyboard travel is good. It looks really good. This is one of the best gaming laptops on the go uh, for the last couple of years. And the design language change is nice. The new AMD processor in there should give us some really great performance with AI features as well. So I can't wait to check it out, but honestly, I think this is going to be a fun year for us in the PC space. Now, moving over to some of the miscellaneous things that I think were best of CES. I'm gonna call out one from my good friend, Michael Fisher, Clicks. Now, some of you might say, well, he's your buddy, that's probably why you're putting it up here. No, not really, because I did have some apprehensions when I first saw the announcements, but I really wanted to give it that chance to try out the device. So Clix is a case keyboard attachment that you can connect to your smartphone. They're starting off with iPhones because of course it's just an easy standard to go with, uh, but brings back that old keyboard feel. Now, if you're one of those people who likes using a physical keyboard or just want something different, clicks to do that trick for you. Now, when I went over there, sat down with Michael and also the team that he's working with on this, I got a very different experience using the keyboard. Now, they have keyboards for the iPhone 15 Pro, they have keyboards for the Pro Max, I'm a Pro Max user if I use an iPhone, and I did like the keyboard on Pro Max, it was much more space for the keys for me, I've got larger hands, and I Definitely enjoyed that. There are a lot of keyboard shortcuts you can use for different things. And I like that functionality there. It's a very different concept in terms of just the usability and something that, hey, if you want to use it, I think it will work for a certain set of people. I like the look. I definitely like the colors and all the different uh, designs that they have. Can't wait to actually check it out. So stay tuned for that, guys. Now, another device that I really liked was the Govi AI Syncbox 2. So the Syncbox 2 is the up updated version of the original Syncbox, 4K120 support. Uh, it's, you know, the AI mantra there, it says it's got AI tools to help maximize your gameplay light and all that stuff. But honestly, it just works well. I don't really think it's AI, but I like the fact that um, it functions well for your games. They do work with a couple of games right now, about seven or eight games uh, with Apex being included. There's no Warzone yet, but that will bring your gameplay to just a better visual representation and also a more enjoyable uh, concept. So that is something to check out. I'm sure they will have it up on their website pretty soon, but the Govi AI Sync Box 2 was pretty interesting. Sticking to that whole gaming flair and also just PCs in general, Thermaltake had something pretty interesting with their, uh, their Swap fan. So basically, I walked to the Thermaltake boot and I found these these fans they have, and something I've been dying for for years. They magnetic, magnetically attach to each other, meaning you only have to have one connector out because you can daisy chain your fans all together, which is pretty cool, meaning you have less wires in your builds, and of course, a new simpler connector format. This is what I've been waiting for for a while with, with uh, just 
PC building. And I want to see more things like that where we have less clumsy connectors and something just much easier to use on a day to day basis. So that was pretty cool. And that those fans, I think, will be a game changer for PC builders as we move forward. Now, the final thing that I did like that I also covered on my IG page is the Rabbit R1. This is the portable AI, AI tool that Rabbit has that I think a lot of people kind of misunderstand. And why I liked it so much is because it, number one, uh, Rabbit says, look, their own language model, which is ALAM and not LLM, does a much better job at understanding what you're trying to do and trying to ask. And some people have asked, hey, look, how about not having, you know, Rabbit R1 as just an app? Well, the R1 is basically an OS and an app and uh, AI solution that basically allows it to do your the task you want to, to do easily. It comes with a SIM card slot, so you have a SIM card in there, only costs one one ninety nine. It's got built in features with the camera, so you actually recognize things um, in terms of just usability. But one of the things I loved about it was the fact that it recognized a lot of the prompts without stopping. So you could have more conversational asks, whether you wanted it to book a hotel, travel for you. You could add all that into one sentence and make it easy and straight straight to go. So it's something that I definitely want to see how it works, but that price point is very inviting just to check out something fresh and different. Um, and they said they will be having units uh, uh, available for sale in the next couple of months. They did actually have pre-orders, which actually sold out uh, 10,000 units. So that's actually pretty crazy that people are interested. But I think this is an indication of where we're going in terms of just the kind of tech. We talked, we saw a lot of AI at the show this year, and I think a lot of people are skeptical. So we wanna see devices that actually power them properly. Can't wait for things like the Rabbit R1, but those are my best of CES guys. I think uh, it's, it was a fun show. There's a lot of great things there. So let me know your thoughts, guys. What do you think about the things I saw at CES? Did you find something better than others? What were your best of shows that you saw from myself and other creators out there? If you have any questions, any comments, let me know. If you want to check out more from Xtreme, head over to their website to see the Horizon Max, the Aladdin, or any of their other projectors. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.